Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate the best way to manipulate data in Microsoft Excel VBA. The cardinal rule is don't use select in Excel VBA. Instead, it is important to understand that from VBA's perspective, Excel is just a collection of objects that can be manipulated in code. What this means is that we don't want to emulate the keystrokes that you would use manually when doing stuff in Excel, but rather understand that you can just tell Excel what you want done and it will do it. Excel has got hundreds of objects in it, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're just going to focus on a few of the objects that make up 80% of what you tend to want to get done. So we're going to use the old 80-20 rule here. So the eight objects that I've listed here will get most of the work done that you need. At the top we have the application object. That stands for Excel or Word or whatever application you happen to be in. Now, you need to get on top of some terminology here. A workbook basically is your Excel file and a worksheet is one of the tabs in Excel. So for example, in this particular Excel in front of you, you have three tabs namely sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. So sheet one, two, and three, these would each be worksheet objects. So for example, here we have the worksheets collection in cell B4, and the worksheets collection will hold references to sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. In cell B5, you have a worksheet object. So this would be the code reference for either sheet one, sheet 2 or sheet 3 if you're actually directly manipulating them. The other element you need to be aware of is the range object. This basically takes away the need to use select. This is the most important object you need to know about because once you properly start using the range object you will never ever need to use select again. The this workbook object that stands for the actual workbook that you have put your code in. So when you're writing VBA code, you tend to attach it to a particular workbook. So the, so the code is actually packaged with the workbook or the file. And if in code you want to refer to the workbook that contains the code, what this means is, for example, you may have four workbooks open at any one time or even 20. So the code does its stuff to the correct workbook and me, for example, in cell B8 refers to the object that contains the code. So for example, within Excel VBA, you can also put code behind the form or behind an actual sheet. So let's get started. So here we have some data between cell A1 and cell F17. What we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to this range and manipulate it without moving the cursor once. So right now the cursor is stuck in J5 and I'm going to I'm going to make the top row of this data bold and I'm going to fill in all of the missing data in columns A and B without actually using the select cursor. So for example, looking at this data we can tell that cells A3 to A5 should have southeast cells A7 through A9 should have southwest, cells 11 through 13 northeast and the balance goes to northwest. Um, similarly, cell B3 should say internet and cell B5 should say retail. So let's go ahead and get this done. So right now I'm going to add a module. I'm going to rename it to M main. So I've rearranged the screen so you can actually see code and uh, the spreadsheet at the same time. We're going to create three variables now, mainly range data, which will refer to the area between A1 and F17, range header, which will cover the header, that's being A1 through F1, and range call to fill. This will cover part of column A and part of column B, which we're going to use to fill in the blanks in those particular cells. So here we go, range data equals this workbook, this workbook referring to the current workbook, dot worksheets, and it's going to be the name of the current sheet, which is sheet two that we want to work with, and range A1, that will get me the top left-hand corner. So range data dot current region, that paints the current region, which 
it's kind of like uh, our cells connected to one another. So if they're connected to one another, the region will be referred to. So here we go, range data that resize one, that resizes the range down to one row, which is the header A1 through F1. Um, you can see us setting the font to bold. And also we're going to set the header to red. The useful thing to do here also is not to capitalize your variables when you're typing them because then when you press enter or return the correct capitalization will appear. The resize method of the range of range data, the resize method of any range is quite useful because what we've done here is set the rows, the size of the range to be one minus the amount of rows that are in the range and then we offset it by one row which uh, comes out quite nicely. Range call to fill that special cells ex select blank cells and then we're going to apply the uh, formula R1C1 which says put a formula into the cells we've referred to and this is the formula we're going to put in uh, quotes equals row uh, re uh, relative reference minus one row up and no offset on the column. What's going to happen with the above situation is formulas will be put into the cell and this is a quick way to convert formulas to value. Say write the value of the cell back into the cell. So get the value that's in the formula and write it into the cell and that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step through the code. Press F8 to step through the code, then continually press F8 and you can see the effects of what we're doing. So I'm going to use the immediate window and I'm going to type range data.select purely so you can see what's happening. So when we, when we do that, you can see that cell A1 has been selected. Um, notice we don't need select for the actual work, it's just to show you what I'm doing, that's the only reason I'm doing select. I'm now going to execute range data dot current region and then we can see the results of that when we press range data dot select again. And you can see now that A1 through F17 uh, has been selected, you can't see the F17 but trust me it's down to F17. And now we're going to set the header to bold, so range header dot font. The uh, range refers to A1 through F1 and now we're going to simply set it to bold. Notice we don't have to select it, we just instruct the code and there you notice it's bold. And now we've just turned it to red and we're going to put in the formulas now into range call to fill. First of all we'll just show you range call to fill typing it in. If we type into the immediate window range call to fill dot select, you'll see what range call to fill refers to. You can see it refers to all of that particular first two columns of the range. But now we're going to say, hey, give us the special cells and what type of cells? Blank cells. Well, if we just copy that into the immediate window, you can see the effect. You'll see that only the blank cells within column A and B will be selected. So we type that, copy that into the immediate window. Um, Control G gets the immediate window to come up. You will notice that only the blank cells have been written, have been selected. So what we're going to do now is we're going to execute the blank, blank cells dot formula R1C1. So again we see chaining here and now we have put in the data into the cells. So you can see we've got we've got formulas in some cells and values in other cells. So what we've got to do now is execute range call fill dot value equals range call fill dot value and the formula will be converted to a value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up the immediate window so you can actually see it change. So so you, you'll see if we click in you can see in the formula bar that it says equals B4 but um, when we execute the line range call fill dot value equals range call dot value call fill dot value, the value of the formula B4 gets written into B4 and now you can see it has changed to retail. And that's pretty much uh, what's involved with uh, not using select. You've got to see, you've got an example of the object model being used and in the code not a simple, not a single select being used anywhere. Hey, thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial interesting and you're not watching it on businessprogrammer.com, 
why not head over to businessprogrammer.com, pop your details into the email box, and I'll be sure to send you an update whenever I launch a new video or tutorial. Bye for now.